All right, praise the Lord. Welcome everyone. It's time for our spiritual meal this morning for the word of God. Before we begin, I would like to make sure that it's God speaking and not myself. Heavenly Father, in the name of your glorious Son, Jesus Christ, I thank you and praise you and give you all honor and glory, Lord, because you alone are worthy of all of that. I thank you for the privilege of being here to share your word today, and it's your word that does the work. It's your Holy Spirit that does the work, and so I just stand here as a vessel for you to speak to everyone here, everyone online, and all those who will listen in the future. Lord, prepare our hearts and minds to receive your truth and transform our lives through your word today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Very familiar prayer in the Bible. We're going to start in Matthew chapter 6, verse, verses 9 through 12. And... Um, and uh, so the disciples are asking Jesus, teach us to pray. And this is Jesus's response. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Amen? Amen. I know we might feel robbed because I'm stopping right here because the focus of this word today is on this very verse right here. Now we look at, this is the format or the guidelines of a good prayer to God, recognizing him, right? Uh, and who he is and his glory, right? Hallowing his name, giving him honor, coming to him as coming to a king. And of course, above all things, we know that his kingdom, the more his kingdom is with us, the better the world would be. And then, of course, we make sure he knows that we have our daily needs met, not just our physical needs, our food and shelter and all those things, but our spiritual food as well each day. Amen. And then the next thing that in this more foundational prayer, the next thing is forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, in another place it's written, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Amen. And why is there a difference? There is no difference, and today's word will prove that. Amen? Amen. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Debt. So the topic of our sermon today is living debt-free. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord, living debt free. Does that sound good to you? Amen. Right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It seems that we're just constantly surrounded by, you know, just just stuck in debt all the time. Now, who wouldn't want to live debt free, right? You want to be free to be able to do what you want to do and um and not be tied down by debt. And so that's that's not unusual. Everybody wants to be debt free. The world is full of techniques and and programs to help people become debt free, right? Amen. Look, they got websites, imagine yourself debt free. They got a books of seven ways to spend the rest of your life life debt free. I love that picture. And um you know, when, we, when we're in debt, we feel like we're in those dark clouds and there's no sunlight. We got to figure out a way to get out of debt. And then all of a sudden, the clouds clear and we're debt free. And, it, and you're, you're much more free to, to make decisions and, and everything with your life. So everybody can relate to this, right? Amen. Unless Amen. some of you were born already never going into debt or whatever else. But I'm pretty sure you all know what this feels like. This whole world is run on debt. We got credit card debt and we got auto loans and we got mortgages. We got a nation that has $21 trillion in debt as of the time this photo was taken. And I think it says here that that means that each, every household is 
has $956,000 of that debt riding on us. But that's another story. That's not what we're here to talk about today. But debt in the physical is definitely reality. Amen? Amen. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7, it says, The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Amen? Amen. So this nation prides itself on the fact that it got rid of abolished slavery. But the truth is, everywhere all around the world, if you are in debt, you are a slave. Amen. You actually Amen. volunteered to become a slave. Amen? Amen? Because now you got something and you have to pay back the money for it, usually with interest. And now you've obligated yourself to that. And you are now a servant to that. If you wanted to ch you know, change jobs or quit or retire early and you got a lot of debt, guess what? Unless the Lord gives you something to do it, you're stuck. And so we are all in debt, amen? Or we're, we become slaves to our debt. And I noticed this in the Bible, and this is why I put it here. The Hebrews actually had it pretty good, by the way. If we think about going into debt in our mortgages and our car payments and everything else, check out what, what the rules were for the Hebrews in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy, right? In the law, 15 verses 1 and 2. At the end of every seven years, you shall grant a release of debts. And this is the form of the release. Every creditor who has lent anything to his neighbor shall release it. He shall not require it of his neighbor or his brother because it is called the Lord's release. Amen? Amen. Wow. So if you want to borrow some money, you know, you're only on the hook for six years. <laughs> Seventh year, you're free. But I'll bet you they were a lot less willing to lend because of this rule as well. Amen? <laughs> they don't have your mailbox info, all this offers for get this credit card and get this loan and everything else. Because they would know in six years, you just walk away. <laughs> Amen. Are we all right with that? Amen. All right. All right. Let's get to the real nitty gritty of what we're here to hear about today, though. But I think it's important for us to see this in the physical because we, we already know what that feels like to be in debt and be just constantly living for something that we have to provide to someone else. Amen. Amen. But there is one type of debt that is way more important than all the others. More important than your mortgage, your car payments, uh, the, the money you borrowed from a family member, the credit cards or anything else. Those things don't have eternal consequences. You have material things, they might take them away. You might be not, you might be in really bad condition and you get thrown in jail or something, but those are nothing compared to the the most important debt of all, and that is spiritual debt. Amen? Spiritual debt is what we're here to talk about today. Not about our credit cards and all that, but that all kind of takes care of itself when we follow God. Amen? Amen. All right. So we're going to talk about spiritual debt. Spiritual debt is basically sin. That's why I said when the prayer says, forgive us our debts as we forget of our debtors, or forgive us our sins, for the uh, as we forgive those who sin against us, the fact is, any time we sin, we are now in debt. Amen. Every person that sins is now in debt. Now we look at it a little different when we when we equate it to the financial world. Amen. Okay. And and why do I say sin equals death? In debt. It is uh, Romans chapter four verses one through four. What then shall we say that Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So believing in God and trusting in his goodness and his righteousness is righteousness in God's eyes. Amen? But to him who works, for to him or her who tries to be good on their own strength and be like God, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. Amen? Amen. Debt. And debt is sin. And we're trying to do all this stuff and saying God isn't holy or, uh, you know, I can be like God. 
we're sinning. And when we sin, we are now in debt. And that's that's as plain as it gets right there. Amen? All the world will give an account. There's we, When we, we have debt collectors, right? We borrow money, and if we don't pay back that debt, we are going to be held accountable. Amen? Well, guess what? If sin is spiritual debt, every human being is going to be held accountable to pay that debt. Amen? Revelation chapter 18. This is what we heard in the Sabbath message yesterday, verses 1 through 8. And listen to how this applies. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. These are the days ahead of us right now, brothers and sisters. Having great authority. And the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and has become a dwelling place of demons. What maybe once used to be a godly nation or a system, whatever the case, the ways of the world, all of that were once good. But the Bible says in the future, what was called good will be called evil and what's called evil will become good. Just turn on the TV, open your smartphones and look at the world today. This is what's happening. Babylon is fallen. It's become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have com committed fornication with her, with her. Now, number one, devil is considered a her and uh, and the devil has a system running in this world that's totally opposite of the ways of God. And ultimately, it's causing the world to do everything against the ways of God instead of following God. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through her uh, the abundance of her luxury. And we see multi-billionaires today and big corporations seem to be taking over even small mom and pop businesses. It's out of control. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her. Now, how do we come out of this world? Well, we got to come out of the system of this world and the way the world op op uh, operates. Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, but lest you, re you re receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her, remember, payment is due on our debts. Remember to her, re render to her just as she rendered to you and repay her double according to her works in the cup which she is mixed, mixed double for her. There's a day of showing up with a, a, a this is what you owe document for all of us, amen? For nations, the whole world. In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously in the same measure, give her torment and sorrow. Remember the uh, rich man and Lazarus? Amen. They both died. Lazarus, who'd been ho homeless, sitting on the porch and hungry. He's now in a beautiful paradise with Abraham. The rich man ends up in this place of darkness and fire and torment. And he's begging to be even for a drop of water, anything. And he can't get anything. And what did God say? He said, in your life, you had all those things. And but but you didn't give anything to Lazarus here. Now you got it that then. Now he Lazarus is gonna get it now, and you're gonna get what you asked for. No presence with me and pain. Amen. Amen. Are we okay? Amen. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen. I am the and am no widow and will not see sorrow. You see, when when we're full of fame and fortune and everything in this world or you, we can get comfortable and think i'm covered i got my i got everything i need therefore her plagues will come in one day the day of the lord death and mourning and famine and she will be utterly burned with fire for strong is the lord god who judges her amen, amen. the devil the demons the fallen angels and those who choose to go against god will get what they ask for and that's the reality there is a day of we're facing that list of our debts that's the reality of all of it each one of us has a balance sheet amen 
Luke chapter 7, verses 36 through 47. Jesus, uh, one of the Pharisees, the religious leaders, asked Jesus to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. I'm sure some of the disciples were surprised that he would go to a Pharisee's house. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, she would not go there any other reason, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, excuse me, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. The Pharisee believes that he's not, but she is. Amen. Amen. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. There's the word, right? A creditor had two debtors. We have a creditor in heaven and we are all debtors. Amen. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. Let's say $500 and the other $50. And when they had nothing which to repay, because guess what? How do you pay for your sin? Yeah, you crawl on your knees for five miles or spin something in your hand. And I don't know. There's no way we can pay for those things. They both had nothing to which we're paid. He freely forgave them both. How about that? Amen? Amen. Tell me, therefore, which one of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him. So you see here that there are different balances, right? We see that clearly in this story. Though all have sinned, some have a bigger balance sheet than others. But God, the, the owner, the, the creditor forgave all of them. You have rightly judged. He Then he turned to the woman and said to, uh, he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. How many people kiss other people's feet? feet huh? You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Amen? Amen. But the truth is, all of us can feel like we're the, the latter. Uh, we don't have that much to be forgiven of. I've only sinned once or twice in my life, so I don't owe a lot. But the Pharisee was unaware, and we are all unaware, unless God reveals it to us, how, how big our balance sheet is. And the truth is, if there's one cent on that balance sheet, we got to pay. And everyone's got to pay, and there's only one way to pay, and we're going to see what that is as we go forward. Are we okay? Amen. Praise the Lord. So we now see that, that there's a balance sheet, there's sin, and the more sin we have, the bigger the balance sheet. So we go to the conclusion of the whole matter that the Bible tells us, and after... King Solomon, the wisest man before Jesus Christ, he, he gave 12 chapters of writing. And at the very end of it, we're very familiar with this, chapter 12, verses 9 through 14. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find acceptable words, and what was written was upright words of truth amen the words of the wise are like goads and the words of scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd amen 
And further, my son, my daughter, be admonished by these of making many books. There is no end and much study is wearisome to the flesh. We don't have to become scholars to understand what our purpose in life is. We don't have to know a lot. This is what we need to know right here. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. You know, we got these little kids in my house. And what I what I see is a lack of honor and reverence and respect. Amen. And when, when that doesn't happen, they're, they run around crazy. But when they understand that they're going to be held accountable, they start to straighten up. Amen? Amen. And that's just the way it is. Little children need to understand it's not a fear that, that I'm going to kill them or throw them to the wolves or anything else, but they need to understand that there's consequences for their actions. Amen? And so the, the whole conclusion is become like a child, fear God, and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. For God, and here is what, how it ties into debt. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Amen? There is nothing in our lives that God does not already see and will not play on a screen in front of you come that day. The, on this day, uh, 37 years ago, uh, and that evening, you did this. You need to pay for it. Amen? Amen. And on this day a week ago, this is what you did. And you need to pay for that. And of course, we know that the world will say, well, if you do more good things than bad things, it washes out. But that's not God's way. God says, I created you in my image and I am sinless. Amen. And so your, your responsibility is to represent me on this earth. And guess what? No one can. We think we can. And then God will show us where we didn't, and that we got a price to pay. Amen? Amen? Yes. All right. Are we okay? Amen. Praise the Lord. So then we get scared. Then we try. Okay, okay. This is the conclusion. So I need to be more like God. I need to look at these commandments. Do not have any other gods. Do not have any idols. Don't take the late, no, name of the Lord in vain. Honor the Sabbath and honor your father and your mother. And don't steal. Don't lie. Don't uh, covet and uh, don't commit adultery. So I'm going to try to do all those things so that I don't have a balance sheet, right? Right. And then we hear Jesus come up and say, like it, he says in Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 30, we think we're just going to just live up to those rules. And Jesus says, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder. Oh, I have not murdered anyone. Good. And whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with any person without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. I've been angry at people without a cause. I thought they did something. I yelled at them. I talked about them. And the truth was there was no truth in it. And the moment that I spoke about them, I committed murder in the spirit. Amen? Amen. Oh, man. And whoever says to his brother Raka, or we can think of modern words that we used against people today, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way and be reconciled to your brother and come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary. If there's someone has anything against you and you have not tried to work it out, that's sin of itself. While you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge, the judge hand you over to the officer and you be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say to you, you will by no means get out till you have paid the last penny. Again, it's debt. Do we see that sin is debt here? And there's a payback for all sin. Amen? Amen. You have heard that it was said of old, you shall not commit adultery. I've never done that. I've been faithful. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman or a man to lust for her or him has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Amen? Mm -hmm. Just thinking about it, just wishing about it, you've already sinned. Oh, my goodness. How can I keep these commandments? 
If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Amen? Amen. He's making it clear that there is a price to pay for all sin. Amen? It's a debt that we carry. So then we see, we hear more of the words of Jesus. We read the red letters in the Bible. And by the time we're list, finished listening to Jesus, we realize that we're not just, oh, just a little bit. The more we read, the more we realize that we owe a lot. Amen? We owe a lot. What do we do? Mark chapter 10, verse 26. And they were greatly astonished, saying amongst, among themselves, who then can be saved? Who can pay that price? Amen? Are we with, are we with, are we with, with this word today? Okay. And then when we realize that we all owe something, then God reveals the miracle. Amen? 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. In this is love, not that we love God. We weren't born loving God. We loved ourselves and what we wanted to do for ourselves. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Amen? His son, Jesus Christ, is the payment, the offering to God for our list of credits that we owe, our debt. Amen? He said, I'm the creditor and I have to, I'm going to require from your hand the price that you all owe me. But you know what? If you are willing, here, I'm going to pay it for you. I've said it before. Imagine you end up going to court and you get convicted. The judge says you are guilty and you now have a death sentence. You're going on death row. And just when they giving that sentence, all of a sudden the doors come open and this perfect person walks in and says, you know what? He is guilty. She is guilty. But I'm going to take that price instead. Let him let him go free. And just like that, the, the debt has been paid, the price has been paid, and the person who was guilty is now set free. Amen? All right. Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. All right. Now we have to talk about how this payment is made. Because the Bible tells us there's only one way to make a payment. Blood has to be shed. That's all there is. Amen? There's no other way to pay for sin but with blood. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. There's no covering. There's no payments. Amen? Blood has to be shed. And and, and in all honesty, without for everyone, that means our blood has to be shed. Amen? Amen. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, in the Old Testament, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for your soul. It is the blood and the blood alone that pays that price. That is the blood that was shared for each and every one of us. Amen? That's it. That's the only blood that will save us. That's the only payment that will ever save us right there. When we make his blood an offering for our soul, we are saved. Amen? Amen. When we say, you know what? I'm going to pay. I'm good enough. I've, 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 I've done enough good things and all that. That, that film is going to play. And that those things are going to show up. And if we're standing on our own, it's our blood that's going to be shed. Amen? But this blood was shed for us. He was perfect. He had nothing, nothing wrong with him. He did not sin. 
Romans 5, 9, much more than having now been justified by what? By his blood, we shall be saved from wrath, judgment, paying the price of our debt through him. Amen. So the Old Testament was, Jesus had not come yet in the Old Testament. And so the Old Testament was always talking about a Savior who would come in the future. A Savior in the person of Jesus Christ. So even a thousand, two thousand years before Jesus ever showed up, they talked about him. And one of the famous characters in the Bible that was representing a type of Christ to, that was to come was David. Amen? 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. Why does this got to do with death? Let's look. David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. So when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. And check this out. A type of Christ. And everyone who was in distress, and everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented, maybe we're discontented with life and the way life is so unfair in this world. All these people gathered to him. Amen? Amen. He was a type of Christ. So he became captain over them, and there were about 400 men with him. We come to him and say, you lead us. We got, we got debts to pay, and we're sick and tired of this unfair world. But you, you lead us. And that's exactly what they were doing. It was a sign of what God would call us to do is to follow our Lord and King. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we okay? Amen. All right. So as they followed him, we too are called to follow Jesus. Amen? Amen. Not just to, uh, thanks for paying the penalty for my sins. Now I'm going to go and do what I want to do. That's not a very secure salvation there. Let me just say. We're called to follow him. He said, follow me and do what he did. What did he do? The first thing he did, he shows up as an adult and he goes and gets baptized and the spirit leads him into the wilderness and we watch his walk and his journey all the way to the cross and we're supposed to do what he did matthew 6 verse 12 remember this is the, our opening verse here forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors what did he do on that cross he forgave our debts he provided the he gave us forgiveness even though we did him wrong he Forgave us. Amen? Amen? What does that mean for us? If we're to follow him, what do we need to do? We need to forgive. Amen? Amen. And I know many of us are familiar with this, but we're going to read it anyway. Matthew 18, verses 21 through 35. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother, sister, any person sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Seems reasonable. After you've done it eight times, Forget about it, right? No. <laughs> but Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. 490 times I got to forgive this person? Well, at least if he does it 491 times, I don't have to forgive him anymore. No. <laughs> right? He's making a point. Anytime someone sins against you, it's for you to forgive them. Amen. Because they know why not what they do. If we think that they don't deserve forgiveness, and how can we stay? We deserve forgiveness. Amen? Amen? That's the bottom line. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts. What is that? We have a debt, right? We have a debt account. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Okay, let's say it was $10,000. Okay? But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold. That's what happened. I told you that we, we, uh, we, we, uh, sorry, got distracted there. Uh, we have a debt. But he was not able to pay. You know, he, I said, if we're in debt, we are, we become slaves. Amen. Amen. So for, for, for us in, in the physical, we become slaves to paying our bills and staying on our jobs or whatever we got to do to pay those bills. 
And of course, if we become debtors to sin, then we are we are now indebted to pay that price. So in this case, he's giving this example, and the, because the guy could not be uh, could not pay the debt, he was sold as a slave with his wife and children and all that he had, and the uh, and that payment be made. So that person became a slave until they can actually make the payment again, just like when we, we can't can't quit our jobs or anything until we can pay off our debts, right? Amen. Okay, so, so he gives this example. The servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. That's all he said, is have patience with me and I will pay you all. And, and it's way worse for us, right? We can't even pay the price for our debt. The master had servant, uh, the master of that servant was moved with compassion. That's who our God is. Amen. Amen. Released him and forgave him the debt. And that's 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 a wonderful thing. But now that servant, you've been forgiven. The price was paid on the cross. The blood was shed. You, your sins, which which had a huge pace, uh, price to pay for them, was taken by someone who was perfect on that cross right there. And he forgave us. And that's how he forgave us. But that servant went out and found one of his. Now this is the person who was forgiven. That servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, just like a hundred bucks or something. And laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Just like this person said to the master. I'll just keep putting the word out. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So this person was forgiven by their master a whole lot of money. And now his buddy just owes him a few bucks and he won't forgive him. He says he's got to pay. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? This is the proof right here. This is how important this is to God. And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due him, all that forgiveness before so my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart, not just with your lips, from your heart does not forgive your brother or sister their trespasses. Amen. Mm -hmm. If we've been forgiven a debt, we must forgive our debtors as well. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. If we sin against God, someone sins against us, he wants us to forgive. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So make Jesus the Lord of your life and live debt free. Amen. Amen. Matthew 26, uh, Matthew 6, verses 25 through 33. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap. They're not out there making farms and doing all this stuff. Nor gather in the barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of not more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one inch to your height? Cubit to your stature. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow. Can we turn the volume down on that, vi uh, that video please? Uh, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. 
And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. We're talking flowers and nature, how beautiful these things are. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying what we're going to eat. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to get over there to that place? How can I afford my gas? All these things that God already knows. For after all these things, the Gentiles, all the whole world needs these things, where your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But make Jesus the Lord of your life, Amen. which means turn to him. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. God doesn't want us stressed out about how we're going to survive each day. He, he, all those animals out there, the birds and all that, they're not doing any, they're not stressed out uh, trying to, to, to figure out God provides everything they need and God takes care of them. And we are way more valuable. We're in his image. We are his children. He knows what we need is to believe in him, put our trust in him, let him pay the price for our sins and follow him. Ask him to lead us and what his will is because he is our father and he knows better than we do because we're all children. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Following him keeps us debt free. Now, maybe that doesn't mean that I give my life to Jesus today and somehow all my bills are paid. No, right? Number one, he's going to provide for paying those bills. And many of us in this room know about that. He, he makes a way for us to get our bills covered. As a matter of fact, he even tests our faith. I'll throw this in there. And he gives us more bills sometimes than we even would let ourselves have in the beginning just so he can prove that he's able to take care of everything. I'm a witness to that. Amen? Amen. I mean, you already owe a lot of money. And he says, no, go out and get that car and for nothing down and make all these payments. But I can't. Okay, I'm going to obey. And then he provides. Amen? Amen. God is good. But the other debt free we've been talking about is our spiritual debt. For those who just came in here any time, any time in our life that we have done something against God, any little sin, if we've ever lusted after someone even in our heart or said something bad about a person, we've murdered them. All those things are check marks on a debt sheet that we need to pay. The payment was made on the cross. And how do we stay debt free now? Now that we've been redeemed and we've given our life to Jesus, how do we do that? We know that we still sin. And what does he tell us to do? confess our sins and get prayer and that that blood washes us clean again amen continue following jesus and stay unspotted from this world <coughs> excuse me following him is the best answer anyone could do not leaning on our own understanding we got a plan we know what we need to do with our life and all that stuff forget about it listen to this Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 12. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. How can we obey God's voice? We need to make sure that he is the Lord of our lives. Jesus said foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. What does that mean? He's, he, he's looking for someone who's willing to let go of their head, their ideas and what they want to do and let Jesus become the head and follow him, listen to his voice. He'll say, no, that's not the way to go. Look, I've got a plan for you. Follow what I'm guiding you to do. This is the way. Obey his voice. Listen to the one who cares about you and has way more wisdom than you do. And observe carefully all his commandments, which he commands us today, which he'll take care of. All it is is about becoming a child and letting our father be a father. That the Lord God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all the blessings, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. 
Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl, all that you have that you survive on. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the, bless, the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, we know we can't do it on our own, but if we say, Lord, lead me, you take care of it, he will do it. He will finish the work he started in us. Then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you, not in a scary way, but they're going to understand, oh my goodness, these people know God. They, This person has has a relationship with God, right? When they heard the disciples talking, they said, who are these uneducated people? They didn't have degrees. They didn't have theology. They had nothing else. They were not with, like me, can't even say the right words, but they recognized they had been with Jesus. Amen? Fishermen and tax collectors and all these people, but wow, they knew they'd been with God. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods and the fruit of your body and the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground in the land of which the Lord <coughs> swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Amen? Amen. Debt free. Amen? You don't owe God anything. You don't have to pay for your sins when you leave this planet. And he will make he will take care of all your needs. Amen. All right. Are we okay? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Let's wrap it up. In conclusion, we wrap up what we just learned. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. So then each of us shall give account of himself to God. Can't get around it. You can deny it if you want. But one day, we're all going to stand before him. Amen? Whether we want to believe it or not, we know it's true. It's going to happen. We're going to leave this body. And all of a sudden, we're going to realize we're not in our body. And we're going to come to the light. And we're going to stand before him. And now, the sheet is going to open up. The history. Every day of your life. Every minute of your life. And fast forward, stopping everywhere that we've called someone a name, not forgiven someone, whatever it is we've done, committing adultery, whatever, stealing, all those things, not honoring the Sabbath, right? I mean, how, that, that's that's like, wait, hold, hold on a second. Honor, that's God's way. He made the Sabbath for himself. Those are examples. We're all going to give account. Will we have the payment? And, uh, some of you didn't see that, but we have the, the payment is the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. John 3, 16, verse 21. He doesn't want you to come there having to pay. This is the bottom line. God loves you. And God doesn't want you to come up and say, I got this. He doesn't want to do this. You ever heard a parent say, you know, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you? That's what God is going to say. You know what? I really didn't want you to have to go through this with you. I actually sent my son and had him nailed to a cross so you wouldn't have to do this. But you made the choice. You made the choice to stand on your own righteousness. And you're going to come and say, I did so many good things, but you do one wrong thing and you've done them all. And now because you didn't take that blood, you didn't take that price, you now have to pay that price. And it's eternal. Amen? Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what he wants. He doesn't want anyone to perish. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. It's going to happen, but when we're willing and we transparent when Adam and Eve sinned, God gave them an opportunity to confess, and they did. And because of that, they were saved. I mean, they, they were kicked out of the garden because they had to get dealt with. But they were still had communion with God. Uh, uh, Cain, however, did he had an opportunity to confess, and he did not. And he got out. He was out completely. All right. And uh, finally, what I believe God is saying to all of us today anyone who hears this message now online or whatever else oh ho everyone who thirsts for truth right we're looking for our hearts are telling us there's got to be something more there's something the words love joy peace kindness gentleness self-control goodness and patience and long-suffering and all those wonderful things that we know are good somehow we know that inside of us there must be a place where we can drink that water and the drinking of the water comes through jesus christ the way the amen. truth and the life amen oh everyone who thirsts come to the waters and you who have no money you who cannot pay your debts that you will have to pay come and buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money, without price. Just believe that I love you so much that I don't want you to have to pay the price, so I paid it for you. That's it. That's it. There is nothing we can stand on but the fact that the one who was righteous paid the price for us, and there is nothing else ever that will get us into eternal life. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this word today, and I just uh, pray that you said everything you wanted to say through me and that I didn't cloud anything. I pray that you water the seeds that have been planted in our hearts and minds today, and that you help us truly see that the wonderful thing you've done for each and every one of us, and, uh, and just have your way in all of our lives. Show us the way to everlasting life. Give us the faith to believe and follow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take us out of Babylon, this world that's fallen, because this world is going to pay the price. That's just the reality. And so we we want to be included, and we want our loved ones to be included. So we, we just offer ourselves up to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For everyone here, for everyone online, and for those listening in the future, uh, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. All right.